Do you want to start streaming to Twitch, but you only have an Android or iPhone? Well, lucky for you in today's video, I'm going to show you how to stream your mobile games or yourself IRL style using your Android or iPhone in today's video. So if that sounds good to you, drop a quick like on the video so other streamers can find this video. And let me show you how to stream to Twitch using your mobile devices. The process between Android and iOS used to be very different, but now it's pretty much the same, though there are a few key differences. So I'll make sure to point them out in the video. So we'll start using the Android process and I'll interject with little differences with the iOS functions. So if you're on Android, the first thing you want to do is go to the Play Store. And then once you're in the Play Store, we're going to search for an app called Prism Live. We're going to be using the Prism Live Studio app instead of the native Twitch app because you can't really do much in the Twitch app. All you can do is either stream yourself or your game and nothing else. You can't have chat or anything fun like that. So using this app is going to open up so many more possibilities for us to customize our live streams. And they were nice enough to sponsor today's video. So shout outs to Prism. So once you've navigated to the Play Store page, you're going to hit install and you're going to install the app. And while the app is installing, if you guys have any questions, what Whatsoever. I'm going to leave their email address in the description down below because they're going to have answers to all your questions much faster and easier than I will. So once the app is done downloading, we're going to simply open up the app and it's going to prompt us to their home screen where we're going to have to log in. So you can see we have a couple options. We have Facebook, Google, Twitch, and their new B2B cloud software, which is pretty cool because basically, if you don't know, it just allows companies to be able to stream their own services through this app. But that's not really going to apply to most of you watching this, but I thought it was a cool little anecdote. So since this video is how to stream on Twitch, we're going to hit the Twitch option. And next is going to prompt us to log in with our Twitch account. That way we'll be able to stream to Twitch directly through this app, as well as being able to see our chat and a couple other things. So we're going to put our username and password and log in. Once you've logged in, we're going to hit the authorize button to allow it to connect to our Twitch account. Next, we're going to have to grant the app permissions like access to our camera, microphone and files and media. So that way it can see us, hear us and be able to save our streams. So we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to have uh, the allowances. So for this one, we're going to do while using the app, while using the app and allow. That way the app can properly work for our streams. So by default, we have this little pop up that now says that Facebook, YouTube and Twitch support have now been added in the recent update, which I will be covering more on in a little bit. So please be patient. But we can actually just click anywhere outside that anywhere outside that. And now you can see we have a couple things at the bottom. We have our connect tab, which if you wanted to, you could scan the QR code to a PC or remote control, but that's a little bit different than what we're doing today. So the main one that we're gonna be focusing on is this live tab here. They also have video and photo if you wanted to record photos or videos of yourself, but most of you probably are not going to wanna do that. So we're gonna focus mainly on the live tab, which focuses on live streaming. Get it, right? So right above the live tab, you can see we have the ready button, which we're not ready to stream yet. So we're not gonna quite click that just yet, but Above that, we have three different options. We have the VTuber option, which will create a VTuber avatar, and it will listen to our microphone. And every time we talk, it'll move the VTuber's little mouth, which is pretty cool. I also have a more in-depth video on the VTuber settings, which I'll leave in the top right corner if you want to watch that video after this video. But you also have the option of doing camera. So if you wanted to click on the camera option, it'll be an IRL stream. So if you're out getting coffee or if you're at the gym and you want to stream yourself to Twitch doing that, You'll likely want to use the camera features so that way you can live stream to Twitch with your camera. Now, for most of you, if you're watching this, you're probably going to want to stream your mobile games like Clash of Clans or Angry Birds. I don't know what you guys are playing these days, but if that's the case, you're going to want to click on the screen option next to that. And then we're going to want to allow the launching of Prism Live on top of other apps. So we're going to hit OK. It's going to bring up our settings. And what we want to do is go down to Prism right there. And then we're going to make sure that this is now enabled. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to allow Prism to be over the other app so it can successfully capture and stream your gameplay on your phone. So once you've done that, we're going to take the uh, little top left corner and hit the little arrow back. And now we have two different options here. So these two options are basically going to be your different stream designs for each setup. So basically, you're going to have a portrait setup and a landscape setup, which means if your phone is in landscape mode, that's what your stream design is going to look like. But if you switch it to portrait mode, which is up and down, then you'll also be able to change that design as well. So they're going to have different designs and layouts for each little setup, which is what we're going to do right now. So we'll start with the landscape option and we're going to design the landscape option. And then you can also design the portrait option if you're playing portrait games. But you really only need to design one if you don't plan on switching and moving your phone around all the time. If you're familiar with OBS Studio or anything like that, this is kind of where you're going to be making all of your changes on how your stream looks like. So I'm going to turn my phone to the side 
you'll be able to see a little bit better. I'm gonna zoom out for you guys. So this is basically what your stream looks like. So as you can see in the background, we have a screen capture. So that's gonna be anything that pops up on your screen, AKA your game. And then in the bottom left, we have a little chat widget. So anytime that someone chats in your Twitch chat, it'll pop up on your screen and on their screen as well. So if you wanted to mess with all these things and basically design it, you have this little bar in the top right corner here. So if you hit the plus button, you'll be able to add a chat, which has already been added. So if you didn't already have a chat there, you can hit the plus button on chat and you'll be able to mess with the settings there. You can also add different web sources. So like different URLs and different things like that. You can add images. You can add basically your VTuber avatar if you want. Or if you wanted to actually just click on something you already have there, you can also change the size of it, your fingers to kind of squeeze like that. So if you want, you can kind of rotate it to your little heart's desires. Or if you want to hit the edit button, which is right inside there, you'll be able to actually edit the different settings for this chat widget. So if you want to have your chat messages disappear, you can have that turn on. But I like leaving them on, so I'm going to personally leave that turned off. You can also change how transparent it is with the text opacity. So I'm going to have it 100% so that way it's not transparent at all. You can also change the chat color, the font. You can change the different styles. So let's say, you know, you don't want to have, you know, a background behind the messages like in style four, then you'll go with style three because that is a transparent option. So basically all of these are different customization settings that you can use and you can feel free to mess with if you'd like. So I'm going to click the save button in the top right corner. And let's just say that this is good enough for me. I'm going to have my chat right there and I'm going to have my game capture here. So everything's going to be good and great. You can also change the different rotation. So the one below that. So if I click that, it's going to bring it to portrait mode and you'll be able to design your stream. But for this reason being, I'm just going to leave it here because we know we're only going to be playing in the horizontal landscape mode. So once you have everything set up the way you want, you're going to hit the little back button in the top left. There are a couple more settings. Like if we tap this thing in the top left corner, you'll be able to turn your mic on and off. So if you want people to hear you, then you can leave the mic on. Or if you don't want them to hear you, you can simply turn that off. So I'm gonna leave it on. Next to that, you can actually click your little username and you'll be able to see your past live streams, which are conveniently hidden behind my hand there. Also change with your different settings. If you click on your name there, you can manage your accounts, your stream destinations and different things like that. So if you want to conceal the watermark, you can also feel free to do that. So if you want, turn that on to conceal that. There's also a bunch of other different settings that you can feel free to mess with. Nothing super duper important. So we're going to go back to the main screen, click out of that. And then now, since we're ready to actually start streaming, we're actually going to click the ready button. And then we're going to have to choose which platform or platforms we want to stream to. So actually, now after this recent update, you're able to multi-stream directly from this app, which is really cool and something Twitch app doesn't directly allow you to do. So obviously we want to start streaming on Twitch, but let's say that you actually wanted to multi-stream to YouTube and Facebook. Well, if you wanted to connect first your Twitch account, I would recommend always connecting the actual account instead of using the custom RTMP, because if you don't connect your direct account, you're not going to be able to have the chat. So I'm going to click connect Twitch. And since we had previously connected our account at the beginning of this video, we don't actually have to re-log in. Once you're on here and everything's connected for the Twitch account, you'll be able to change the resolution here in the different stream quality settings. You can change it from 720 to 1080, 480, 360. So if your stream is looking kind of bad and it's like laggy and, you know, dropping frames, you'll want to mess with these kind of settings to see what your phone and internet speed can handle in terms of streaming. If it looks a little bad, you can reduce all of these different settings to make them lower. Or if it looks, you know, bad, but you have a strong connection, you can also increase these settings like to 1080, or you can also change the bit rate to, let's say, I don't know, uh, 6,000 or 5,000. It's really gonna depend on everyone's situation, but personally, I feel like these settings right here are a good starting point for mobile streamers. So I'm just gonna leave everything on default. You can also click on this box like right here and you'll be able to change your category and game. So if you actually click on that little search bar, you'll be able to see all of the new pictures, which wasn't here before. So you'll be able to search and figure out what game you actually wanna stream to Twitch. So you just simply go in here. Let's just say we wanna stream Angry Birds two. So I'm going to type in Angry Birds. They might not actually have Angry Birds two. Uh, I guess we'll find out real quick. Let's see, please. 
Fingers crossed, and I don't see it, so I'm just gonna do regular Angry Birds, and that is completely okay. And then since I've selected my category, you can actually scroll down, and you can change a bunch of things. So if you wanna make it branded content, which a lot of you guys are probably not gonna do because that's like for sponsors, but you can also change the chat to emotes only, sub only, followers only chat, slow mode, all of that stuff you can now do directly through the app, which you couldn't do before. So make those changes as you would like. You can also change the title of your stream, then you can click right there, which is above there. If you want to change your title, you can feel free to do it there and hit save. But that's pretty much all the metadata we need for our stream. So then we can go to the My Channels button. And this is where you'll be able to add other platforms in case you wanted a multi-stream. So for example, they do have more options like they did for Twitch, for YouTube and Facebook. So for example, if we wanted to connect our YouTube account, we'll connect our YouTube account. So I'm gonna click connect YouTube. And then once you've connected your YouTube account, you'll now see it added as one of your platforms. So if you wanted a multi-stream, you'll simply select more than one of the different destinations. And that way, when you hit go live, you'll be streaming to both platforms. But let's say that you wanted to edit the different YouTube settings now, right? Like you could with Facebook or Twitch. So if you wanted to change those settings, we're gonna hit the X button. And then now that this says multi-stream on, we're gonna click on that and we're gonna click on the YouTube tab, which just populated right there. So click YouTube. And here you'll be able to change all of your different settings. So you can change your different titles. You can change the schedule. If it's public, private, or unlisted for kids, category, latency, literally everything you need is now available through the app, which it wasn't before. So that's a really cool update that they just came out with. So make all of your changes necessary that you would like to, and you can hit save. And then after you're done setting up all of your different accounts like Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, then you'll be able to hit go live. So what I'm gonna do is hit go live here. And then it's gonna say, do you want to save the live video on the device? So if you want to, you can. It might make your phone work a little bit harder. I'm not too sure. But since Twitch usually saves the videos anyways, I can hit no. But if you're worried that Twitch isn't gonna save your video because you haven't seen my how to save your Twitch videos video, which is in the top right corner, then you can also hit yes as a safety net. But since I don't want this necessarily to save on my device, I'm gonna hit no, it's entirely up to you. But now we can hit the start now button. So it's gonna start our stream in three seconds. So you can see that my microphone volume is getting picked up there. You can see that we've been live for one second. So if you wanna change your game volume, you can change the device volume with this little slider. If you wanna change how loud you are in comparison to the game, you can feel free to drag this slider here for your microphone. And if you wanted to end your stream, you'll see it in the top right corner there. So you can click end, which we won't be doing just quite this second. But if you wanna see your chat, you'll just go into the app and hit the bottom left corner. You'll be able to see show chat view. So anyone that talks in my stream, you'll be able to see here. And if you wanted to, let's say enter chat. So you hit enter text for chat and that way you'll be able to send messages. So I'll say hi. And anyone that's in my Twitch stream will now see that I said hi in the chat if you wanted to do that. You can also hit the little pencil icon here. It also sent it on my uh, YouTube stream as well, which is cool. So I'm gonna hit the pencil icon. You'll be able to change your category or games if you end up changing games. So if you're using an iPhone, this is what the screen's gonna look like. So when you hit go live, you're actually gonna have the option to broadcast your stream, which you definitely want to, but this part's important. You have to decide whether you wanna have your microphone on or off. So if you want them to hear you, you're gonna leave this on, but if you don't want them to hear you, you're gonna leave this off. So that's a little bit different than the Android part. So let's go back to the Android part. So now that this is all set up, all you would need to do is navigate out of this app and go to your game. So right now my entire screen's being captured. So what we need to do now is go and navigate to our game. So I'm gonna go out of here and then we're gonna go to our game, bring that up, turn it to the side and now you'll see that we have the little bubble in the top left, which I believe is Android specific, so you won't see that on iOS, which I will be going over in a minute, I promise. So you'll be able to click that bubble and you'll be able to adjust your, your game volume and your mic volume as well. You can also see your chat too, and you'll be able to change your settings there. So it's a nice little way to quickly make all of your changes. So you'll notice that there is a difference between iOS and Android. So if you're on Android, you're gonna have that little bubble that I had showed, but if you're on iOS, you don't have that bubble which means if you wanna have chat, like you can read your chat, you're gonna to wanna to actually go back into the app. So I'll go back into Prism Live. And then once you're on your Prism Live app here, you're simply gonna hit this little chat button. And you'll be able to show the chat there. 
So that way you'll actually be able to read it. Um, but unfortunately you don't have that little chat bubble overlay as the Android users do. But other than that, it's pretty much the same process as Android. So let's go back to Android. If you guys wanna see what it looks like on Twitch, let me show you what it looks like really quick. So you guys can see now that we are currently live streaming over on Twitch. And you'll notice that we have our little chat overlay there. You can see our messages and you can see our gameplay here. So everything is on and live about the stream. That's great. I'm actually going to turn my phone back to vertical and let's see what happens. So if I actually go back to the app and it's going to change it to vertical, but you can see it is capturing everything on your phone. So you do want to be careful about that. But when you're ready to end the stream, you'll just go back into the app like we have here and you'll simply hit the end button going to end your live broadcast and if you said yes to wanting to record your videos then it will have saved this video onto your phone but since we hit no it didn't save it directly to our phone which is fine and then from here you can feel free to share it if you want or simply just back out and you're back on the regular app. So now that you know how to stream on mobile, watch this playlist to the side of me. It's gonna show you everything you need to know about being a streamer. My name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.